everyone, it is Jazz here. Today I am doing my May reading wrap up. It's going to be a pretty much solely graphic novel review kind of day and I hope you guys enjoy it and let's just jump into these graphic novel reviews. that I completed in the month of May was the ninth book in the Sandman graphic novel series by Neil Gaiman entitled The Kindly Ones. Basically there is a woman who we met in an early or graphic novel and she believes that Dream, the main character of our story, has stolen her baby and she enlists the Furies aka the Kindly Ones to enact some fury. I really enjoyed the plot of this one. This is the first one where a lot of the plots that have been brought forward in the other graphic novels leading up to this start to kind of merge and characters from all those different things start to merge. You get to re-see some characters that you haven't maybe seen for a while or actually see how they kind of came to play in the overall arc of the story. This one also explores a lot of cool concepts in an interesting way. Things about life and death and you know the meaning of story. Of course the whole series though is kind of about the celebration of story and the meaning behind what story can mean to each and in, in each individual. So it just explored that even more. This one also features a lot of the endless characters, which you know I love, particularly since this one does feature a lot of death and delirium, who are my favorite endless characters, because they are just, I love those girls. All of this being said, while the plot was great, there was one element that did make this book kind of hard to rate in a traditional rating system because I for a lot of this one did not enjoy some of the artwork in it some of it was really great some of it was super super subpar one particular artist in this did some really weird stuff with characters facial features which made it really hard to kind of identify some of the characters that you knew from previous graphic novels uh, right off the bat. It wasn't really congruent to me with what I'd seen previously in the series and also what I felt like the story was doing in terms of the types of characters that were used in this. I decided to kind of give this two readings for you guys. One is like for the plot and that is like a five star plot. In terms of art, I'd probably say like a three and a half stars. After completing book nine in Sandman, I thought why not jump into book 10 of the series, which is also the final book of like the original Sandman series. And this one is called The Wake. The book 10 is not kind of like the traditional Sandman story to me just because it is more of an epilogue to me than a you know traditional story arc. The first part of it is more of a tying of knots if you will from the ninth book. It's not like something where like exciting stuff happens but it is very intriguing in an intellectual way which I really enjoyed and also unlike the ninth book 100% of the art in this book is awesome and bomb. The only thing that I was not sure I particularly liked about The Wake was the last third or so of the book. I feel like the first two thirds of the book, you could have literally ended it there and it would have been fine. But it continues on for this last third. And this last third is, I believe, three stories. I don't know what to call them. They're like short stories. And two of them center around characters, or I guess in the case of Shakespeare, real people that have been introduced previously. There were like super minor characters. And then there's one that kind of revolves about around this guy that's traveling through the desert of dream. The one about the minor character and the one about Shakespeare were kind of interesting and I particularly like the Shakespeare one that centers around him writing his final play which was The Tempest and I found that really cool. The one with the guy in the desert, I really didn't like that one. It was so 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 incredibly boring. It had like a concept that was interesting but I think we really could have done without that one. So that last third, I'm like, did we really need that? But at the same time, I was like, we kind of needed it. So it was, I was iffy on that last bit. So in the end, I decided to give this book four and a half stars. I still think it's a really solid end to a series and I do get why those stories were there. I didn't dock more than half a star because I get it. It's just, 
that one was not my cup of tea. After Sandman, I was still in a super graphic novel mode, but I kind of wanted to read a graphic novel that wasn't gonna like explode my mind and make me think about every concept in the universe like Sandman does. So I wanted something kind of simple and fun. And I also ended up deciding to try the 30 day free trial on the Comicsology Unlimited. Basically they have like a library of graphic novels and comics that you can borrow and you only have to pay I think $5.99 a month. So I was trying the free trial of that and I thought, since I'm doing that, I might try some comics that I've maybe never heard of and maybe I wouldn't have tried if I had to like pay for them full price. And I decided to read a graphic novel called Alex and Ada, Volume 1. This book is set in the future where like crazy technology exists, AI technology exists, and it centers around a young man named Alex. And basically the last thing he wants for his birthday is an AI robot girl, but his grandma thinks you need one of these and she gets him this AI robot girl. And he kind of slowly discovers that there's more to the AI world and more to their sentience and intelligence than he expected. Alex and Anna basically did what I wanted it to do. It was a fun, lighthearted story, but it had enough science fiction and stuff to it that it kept me like intrigued. Now, in terms of stories about AI and the sentience of those AI characters, I will say that it's not like the deep and meaningful thing that you usually get with that kind of story. And this has not yet delved into that. Subsequent volu volumes may, and so I'm kind of intrigued to see what will happen with that. But in this first one, it's literally just this Alex character wanting the best for Ada, the AI character, figuring out how to get her sentience just because he wants the best for her, which is super cute, right? <laughs> it's definitely like more cute than I thought it was gonna be. It's closer to a contemporary with a sci-fi feel. I wanted especially the human characters in this to have just a little bit more depth to them. I feel like they're a little like not multi-dimensional yet. Of course Ada who is an AI is kind of supposed to be a blank slate at first and I totally understand that. That makes sense. But Alex in particular, the main character, I think they could have done a lot more to show like more information about him or more depth in him and I think maybe they did that on purpose possibly because maybe he's supposed to grow and he's just kind of supposed to start out as like your average dude and then like grow throughout the series. I don't know. I'll have to read subsequent stories in this. So I'm hoping that if I do read subsequent volumes in Alex and Ada that both characters will grow a little bit more and have a little bit more depth. But overall, I think all the characters could have had a little more depth. But like I said, this book did what it was supposed to do. It was just kind of a good old fun time. And I decided to give it four stars. The final book and graphic novel that I completed in the month of May was Toil and Trouble. This is a really cool graphic novel that centers around the Shakespearean play Macbeth, which I have not read yet, but I have seen the actual play and it takes place from the point of view of the three witches in the story. These three sisters are in charge of controlling the line of kings in Scotland and they all differ and disagree on how that should happen and who should actually be king. Their kind of influence is what causes a lot of the issues I would say in the Macbeth story. I thought Toil and Trouble was just super super cool. I really enjoy parallel novels because I find the idea that you can see a new point of view in a story that you're already familiar with really interesting and this one was no different. I found this particularly interesting just because it was cool to see how the dynamic of these, I guess their sisters, the witches, how their dynamic really came into play in terms of the influence that they had over the human characters and what was happening in the Macbeth story. And I was like, oh, no wonder Macbeth and Lady Macbeth loved it. I also really liked that the witch characters had like powers that you didn't think of when you maybe read the play or have watched 
the play, control over certain elements, and could change themselves into animals. They had like some elements of almost fae characters that you've seen and that was a really cool thing to see in the story because artistically it made it really nice to look at and read and the art in this is just flipping beautiful. The coloring is great and they have some flashback elements in there which they really handled artistically well. In terms of like the stuff that the skills that these characters had really looked nice as well as really serving the story and being a cool kind of different element that I wouldn't have thought would be part of a Macbeth story. I also really like that not only does this explore like, a different point of view of the Macbeth story, but it also explores some things that happened before Macbeth that when I like saw the play or think about this play, I wonder about like Beth and Lady Macbeth lose a child before the play starts. And it's kind of talked about, but it's not like obviously gone into because it has nothing to do with the main plot as such. So it was really cool to see elements like that explored in flashbacks. I really enjoyed this. If you like parallel things or like new spins on classic stories, you'll probably enjoy this as well. And I gave this five stars. That was my graphic novel May reading wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts on these books. I have linked all the books that I read below in the description. So if you want to check those out, you definitely can. I highly recommend all of them because it was a pretty good graphic novel reading kind of month. On a side note, I am so sorry that I am super behind on replying to all of your comments. It's just been a crazy month because work was kind of crazy. I teach at a dance studio and all the shows came up in one week and I was like directing two musicals and helping out with dance shows and other musicals and my mom had a show so it was like a five show like a week and one week and so I didn't get to answer all of your comments but I promise I will get to as many of them as I can or all of them don't think I've forgotten you I will get to it now after this video I am going to do something different with my to be read so I'm not going to have a traditional to be read video but I do have some really super cool videos coming up and I have like a cool vlog that I am going to start editing soon and of course there will be the vote for the book excerpt that I will read for the month so you have all that stuff to look forward to and that is it for today my fabulous peeps thank you for watching bye